Kwasi here and in this video I'm gonna share with you the biggest block to manifestation in this modern age right now and how we're all victims to this. Before I begin this video I wanted to quickly announce that I'm doing a free giveaway of my book Life Mastery. If you want to enroll into a competition to win this book for completely free on Friday, so tomorrow, just comment Life Mastery down below and we'll be picking one lucky winner out of the comments every single week to get this book for free in the ebook format. Also, if you're interested in the free one-to-one -one consult for the Reality Mastery program, wait till the end of the video for the announcement on that. And with that, let's get started. So in this video, I wanna to talk to you about the biggest block to manifestation. And you, know, you might be wondering, well, quasi, what is that? You know, is it something that I'm doing? Is it something that I'm being exposed to? And it's a combination of both, okay? And you know, this is a combination of social media and your phone. And so why I wanna talk about this is because this was something that I was thinking about lately and I've been seeing my personal activity for the past few months. And when you start to observe yourself, you start to see that you know, these are the only things that are leading you away from consciousness and more into compulsivity. And compulsivity literally means bondage, right? So anytime you're compulsive towards something, you're automatically moving away from consciousness, right? So you're being reactive and not proactive. Whenever you're on your smartphone every single minute of the day and you can't control yourself, it's literally becoming a drug. It's the silent killer, right? So anything that kills consciousness automatically makes you reactive to life. And the whole purpose of manifestation is to be a conscious creator of your reality. If you can't be a conscious creator of your reality, then you are unconsciously subject to whatever patterns have been going on around right now. So with that being said, the biggest block to manifestation I've seen is your personal smartphone, right? So Whenever you check your notifications, what happens in your brain is that you get this thing called a dopamine spike, right? A dopamine spike is the same thing that you get when people snort cocaine, you know, do some sort of stimulant, do some sort of drug. And this dopamine spike, it gets you, it sort of trains you to seek more and more of that pleasure. It gives you pleasure in your brain. So when you reward someone, when you get a reward, and let's say you do something good and you reward yourself, you know, you have a piece of cake, you have dessert, you get a dopamine spike. So this wires your brain to seeking these activities more and more because your brain naturally seeks activities that give you a dopamine spike. Now in this age of shallow work and distraction, because of all of our phones and the notification checking, what's happened is we have been wired for short-term pleasures, right? So only poor people are wired for short-term pleasures, right? So anytime you're wiring yourself to seek instant gratification, you're immediately staying stuck in poverty. Really think about this. Rich people are wired for long-term pleasures. They have learned to wire themselves for long-term pleasures. People who stay stuck in poverty, they watch a lot of movies, they watch a lot of TV. People who read a lot of books, rich people, they why themselves for longer term pleasures? Because it takes you around 30 minutes to really get to the meat of the book, right? It takes you at least 30 minutes to get into a book and you don't get that intense of a high as opposed to watching a good movie or snorting some drug, right? So that dopamine spike, just as quickly as it comes, it goes away as well. But if you read a book, it's more of a sustained high, right? So that's the goal with all spirituality and meditation. It's not an intense dopamine spike, but rather it's a high maintained state. So there's no fluctuation of it. The very reason that your life fluctuates up and down is because of what you're experiencing in here. This is in here, it's translating into your physical external reality. So anytime you gear yourself for short term pleasures, you're automatically shooting yourself in the foot, right? So everything nowadays is gearing you for short term pleasures ordering something on Amazon. It takes one day to get here, two day prime delivery. You know, you press a button, you get access to a movie. There's no longer any waiting anymore. So this patience, this quality of patience has died out. So we are no longer able to gear ourselves for longer term pleasures. 
And as a result of that, the quality of deep work is dying. And this was an interesting book that I read by Cal Newport. It's called Deep Work. And essentially the idea is we're gearing ourselves to shallow work, checking our email notifications all the time, you know, checking our phones all the time, and it's not really benefiting us because the world right now needs deep work. When you do deep work, you actually get things done, like write a novel, like make a course, actually do something that's worthy and gives value to the world. Anytime someone did anything valuable, it was out of deep work and a state of flow, right? So when you gear yourself for short-term pleasures, your attention span gets reduced. This is the reason why so many people are growing up with ADHD and short attention spans. And I remember I used to suffer with this as well. And I remember when I first started college in my first semester, I would try to study, but I would just be checking my phone every 10 minutes. I would do one problem, check my phone, do another problem, check my phone. And I wasn't getting into state of flow. I wasn't getting into deep work. And as a result of that, my grade suffered, right? So If you can just sit down and really block out time to focus on a task, you're going to see that your ability to get things done automatically increases because there's a thing called task switching. Anytime you switch from doing a math problem to checking your phone, you're going to have to, you know, try to get back into it. As an example for yourself, try like switching tasks really quickly. You're going to get burnout. You're going to be like, oh no, I I can't do that. Because what happens is automatically when you switch to another task, it takes 15 minutes to actually get your mind off the previous task. Your mind is still on the previous task itself. So this is why you got to block out hours to actually do deep work. If you read the book by Cal Newport, this is going to shed more understanding into that. But really I saw that I started failing school when I checked my phone every five minutes doing a problem. And what I did the semester after I identified the problem was I just put my phone away in a drawer or put it in another room or put it under my pillow. And as soon as I did that, I saw that I got more work done. As a result, I could focus more. As a result, I was training my attention span. As a result, every single area, not just my grades, every single area of my life improved. So this is a crucial quality you've got to have, the ability to do deep work. A lot of people have this missing because they're being compulsive all the time. They're being run by their phones. They're not running their phones, right? So with that, I want to share with you four keys that's going to help you break free from this compulsivity and get to more and more consciousness and be a conscious user of your phone rather than a reactive and reactivity towards your phone. So with that, let's get to that. So the key to consciousness with using your phone, there are four keys. Step one, what you want to do is set schedule distractions. Okay, this is extremely key. Now, what happens is because you don't have schedule distractions, your mind needs periods of deep work. And if you do have deep work, it kind of drains you. So at the same time, you need to create that psychic entropy. So it goes from psychic dysentropy to psychic entropy. And you've seen that after a long day of work, your mind just wants to kick back and relax, right? And that's because it's been focusing on one task for a very long period of time. So you need to schedule distractions for yourself or else you're going to unconsciously do it. So begin getting into a habit of consciously scheduling distractions for yourself. And what I mean by that is block out time when you do work, block out time when you're going to get into chaos. So you need to alternate between chaos and order or else it'll be done for you. This is just one of the laws of nature. You can't balance the two poles. It'll be balanced for you. So give yourself time, maybe an hour in the day when you have playtime, when you have movie time, watch this, you know, let your mind go, be free. So to give you an example, what I do is when I wake up first thing in the morning, I work from 7 a.m. to 10.45, right? 7 a.m. to 10.45, I'll work and then 10.45 to 11, I'll check my phone, do social media stuff. I've started implementing this recently and I've seen that my ability to do deep work has gone up all the way. Because before that, what I was doing was from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. I'd do work, 8 a.m. to 8.15 I'd check my phone and then it would take me another 15 minutes to focus on the task again and then get back to it and then do this and then do that and then come back, back and forth, back and forth. I'm doing shallow work. It's not effective to do shallow work. I'm telling you, you've got to block out time where you have at least three hours to focus on one task and then schedule yourself distractions. At first, this is going to be very difficult, right? So especially if you're an entrepreneur, this is going to be very, very useful for you, the ability to do deep work. 
right? The ability to sit down and focus 100% on a task. Even if you're at work, you know, you could totally apply this where you don't check your phone because this also gears your mind in a way that it's not focused on the short-term pleasure, this short-term dopamine spike, but the longer-term gain, right? So that's immediately going to make your manifestations better because now you're going to be able to focus your mind on the long-term big picture thinking. And whenever you don't get something in the short term, you're not just like, oh no, nothing is going my way and your mood doesn't go down. So there are a lot of benefits to this. So make sure you're applying this in your life. I'm so serious. Now, if you learn to be a master of your phone, you're gonna master your life. (laughs) Unfortunately, this is the reality now. We have all of this great knowledge about manifestation, about the law of attraction, about, you know, becoming conscious creators of our lives. But it's just these things that keep blocking us and our ability to get there. Right? So all of us, we know all of this stuff, but we just can't apply it because something is blocking us from getting there. This is one of the biggest ones. And what you want to do, number two, apart from scheduling distractions, is have a wind down period an hour before bed. Right? So right before you fall asleep and right when you wake up, that's the key periods, the key trans- transitioning periods, if you will. And your subconscious is the most moldable then. If you keep checking your phone before you fall asleep, you're never going to be able to fall asleep. And I've seen this personally. I saw that back when I used to watch TV as I fell asleep, I couldn't get good quality sleep. You know, I I was just always, it wasn't peaceful. There was always a chaos. So what I started to do was an hour before bed, I would put my phone on airplane mode. I would say, you know, good night to my wife. You know, we would just go to bed. And that's it. No, no more texting, no more texting, no more checking social media. So an hour before bed, you want to consciously say to yourself, shut down. And I know this seems like a gimmick, but it really works. You just say to yourself, shut down, and you gear yourself to not checking your phone, not checking your email, not checking your notifications, but do other tasks that give you peace of mind. Now, going for a walk actually makes you more peaceful. Reading a book makes you peaceful. Do nothing. Get into the habit of doing nothing. You know, we always want to be doing something. We always want to be occupying our minds, you know, stimulating it all the time. If it's constantly stimulated, you're never going to be able to fall asleep. If you have trouble falling asleep now, this could be why. This could be a big reason why. If you just put your phone away, do a quick little 10 minute, 15 minute meditation before bed, you'll sleep like a baby. I promise you that. Number three, what you want to do is have your phone on airplane mode until you actually have your first scheduled distraction in the morning. Do not check your phone first thing in the morning. This automatically gets you into a reactive frame first thing in your day. However you set start off your day, that's how the rest of your day goes. This is key. If you have a morning routine where you meditate, get into consciousness and, you know, get present to the moment. If you just wake up, sit on the corner of your bed, get present to the moment, the rest of your day is going to be lived in more and more presence, right? But if you wake up, check your phone, check your notifications first, you're just going to get into a reactive frame the rest of the day. And what I used to see was when I woke up and checked my notifications, I didn't want to get out of bed. I just wanted to scroll through Instagram more and more. And this was around two to three years ago. I would just scroll through Instagram more and more and just want to stay in bed. And why that was, was because I was getting this dopamine spike. And when you get a dopamine spike, you've already gotten the reward. So you don't really want to do anything else the rest of the day. So this also destroys your willpower bit by bit every single day. So have your phone on airplane mode until 11 a.m., which is my personal time when I check my phone at 10.45, your first scheduled distraction in the day. So whatever you do, at least have two to three hours after you wake up that you don't check your phone because this gets you into a reactive mode for the rest of the day. This is absolutely key. And number four, Whenever you are going through your day, just resist the urge to check your phone until your next schedule distraction period. I would say set maybe four 15 minute schedule distractions throughout your day, you know, every two to three hours. If you can, if not, you can set it a little bit earlier, right? A little frequently and a little uh, more. So resist the urge to check your phone and don't just be, you know, when you're online, don't just check your phone. When you're waiting for something to be delivered, oh, don't take that as an opportunity to check your phone because what that does is it again gears your mind towards that short-term gain, that short-term dopamine spike because now you just can't be at peace within yourself. You just always need something to be occupied by to feel a certain state of being in your own way. You're not drawing state from within, you're drawing state from without. And if you draw state from without, you're always going to be 
a slave to your external reality. Learn to feel good within your own body, you'll attract good things into your life. It's as simple as that. And just become conscious whenever you have the urge. Whenever you do have the urge to check your phone, just become conscious of the urge and just experience it fully. And you're going to see just by doing that, you're going to start to train your brain to be a completely different beast. Right? So if you learn to control your phone and your urges and just use your phone a little less, gear yourself to long term pleasures, your manifestations are going to get accelerated tenfold. And why that happens is because you just get conscious. It's as simple as that. You just get more and more conscious. The more you can increase your consciousness every single day, the less you're a slave to life, the more you're a conscious creator of your life. Right? So I want you to remember that and I hope this was valuable. And just to recap, let's talk about some of the concepts. So what we talked about today was automatically when you're in more and more compulsivity, it will lead to bondage and not freedom. You're always going to be bound to something. And your smartphone nowadays, it's leading you to more and more reactivity rather than proactivity. You're reacting to your emails. You're seeing an email, there is no thought going behind it. You're just in reaction mode, right? And notifications give you a dopamine spike. Dopamine spike trains you to already feel the reward and you start to seek more and more of that dopamine spike. So it's hard to get out of that activity of checking your phone because it's so addictive. It so gives you such a dopamine spike. It does the same thing in your brain as snorting a line of coke. I'm so dead serious. So this is really the silent killer of mankind's consciousness. Imagine everyone became a zombie. This is what it's like. You're just becoming a zombie. Don't become a zombie, become conscious, right? Don't become reactive, become proactive. And poor people are geared to short term pleasures. That's why mankind isn't able to, majority of men isn't able to break free from poverty. You know, you're gearing yourself to short term pleasures. Rich people make long term investments. They put in work knowing that a year from now it's going to compound, two years from now it's going to compound. So their internal state of being isn't affected by you know, what happens in the short term. Right? So they're always gearing themselves for the long term pleasures. You want to get yourself in that state so that you, your internal state doesn't get affected. Because if your internal state gets affected, your external reality is going to get affected too. Your internal world is reflected out into your external world. Your attention span is going to get very, very, very reduced and shortened if you just gear yourself to checking your phone every five minutes. Right? That's going to be the length of your attention span. And this is exactly why I failed school first semester. My attention span was like this. And after I just said, all right, no more phones during studying, and I set myself time periods, time blocks, boom, started doing better in school, all other areas of my life. And we also talked about deep work, the importance of deep work and why you should avoid shallow work. It's, it's important, it's necessary to do shallow work as well because you've got to respond to your emails, right? That's why you want to consciously create those time periods when you do throughout your day. So those four different scheduled time periods, 15 minutes where you do respond to your notifications, you do respond to your emails. But just remember that you know, people are going to get used to it if they don't see a quick response from you. And people are just going to eventually get used to, okay, well, this is how Quasi responds. You know, he's not on his, on his phone all the time. This is just how long it takes. So you just got to train people to get used to that. And the four keys are, number one, schedule distractions. Number two, this is key, have a wind down period an hour before bed. Because or else you're going to go into a reactive frame or, you know, when you're going to sleep. And then next day, if you check your phone first thing in the morning, you're going to start the day off into a reactive frame. And finally, always resist your urge to check your phone. Right? So consciously observe this urge that you're getting to check your phone and just say, no, I'm not going to do it. And this will train your willpower a lot more. And with that, I conclude this video. I sincerely hope this helped. This was a different kind of video. You know, I don't talk about practical, well, I do talk about a lot of practical stuff, but apart from that, I don't talk about actual things in everyday life. But leave me a comment letting me know what you thought of this, if this was helpful, if you are actually, you know, drawn to your phone a lot, because I find that I am, you know, uh, and I'm sure a lot of others are going through this as well. So please leave me a comment letting me know what you thought of this. And I hope this helped. If you're new to the channel, make sure you like, comment, subscribe and hit that little bell there. So you're notified of any new video that I put up. Also, I'm super excited to announce that a free one to one console, as I mentioned before, is open for the reality mastery program. And if you want to enroll, 
and sign up for your free one-to-one -one consult to see if we would be a right fit to work together and see if I would be a right fit to help you take your life to the next level, click the link in the description below. And how the Reality Mastery program works is it's essentially based around the most powerful paradigm of manifestation. Anything that I wanted in my personal life, it was systematically manifestable all as a result of who I became. It wasn't what I did, it wasn't what I wanted, but rather who I became. When I became the attractive version of Quasi, my dream partner came into my life. When I became the fit, athletic version of Quasi within me, in my internal world, my external world started to reflect that. I transformed my physique. When I wanted, when I actually became the entrepreneur version of myself, then I started attracting the money that I wanted and the success in my entrepreneurship career. You know, even gaining subscribers on YouTube. I became the successful YouTuber uh, and then subscribers came. It was all a result of who I became within me. It wasn't you know, what I did, what gimmicky little technique I did, you know, what strategy I tried, you know, what course that I followed. It was all because of who I became within me. And I know this is possible for you as well because we're helping our clients do this in our, their lives every single day. So if you're interested, make sure you sign up for your free one-to-one -one consult and let's see if we're right fit to help you get to the next level in your life. Also, if you haven't joined the Facebook group yet, it's a great community of like-minded members, so make sure you click on the link in the description below to join the Facebook group, and I hope I see you there. Until next time, peace.